In this lesson, we're going to look at the properties of real numbers. And we're going to start with the properties of real numbers that apply to the operation addition. So the first one we're going to look at is the commutative property. And so let's say that we were going to add the numbers 5 plus 13. Well, we know 5 plus 13, of course, is 18. But does it matter if we do it 5 plus 13 or if we did it in this order, 13 plus... Okay, we still are going to get 18. And that's what the community property says. The community property for addition says if we're adding two numbers together, okay, where A represents the first real number and B represents the second real number, we can add them in any order. And it doesn't matter what kinds of numbers they are. It could be two fractions, two decimals, um, it could be a fraction and a decimal, it could be a whole number, um, it could be integers, it could be a mixture of any of those things. It could be five numbers that we're adding, it could be a hundred numbers that we're adding. No matter how many numbers, we can add them up in whatever order we like. So then we have the associative property. Okay, so one of the things in the associative property is we usually have some type of grouping symbols. So in the associated property, let's say that we were doing 16 plus 9 is grouped. So normally, order of operation says do that first. But in this case, if I add 16 plus 9, I could do that. I have to think about what the sum is. And then I see, then I would have to take my answer and add 11. But I know that if I was to add 9 to 11 first, I would get 20, so maybe I want to do 9 to 11 first. So if I was to add it like this instead, 9 plus 11 first to give me 20, well, 20 plus 16 is easier, it's 36. And let's see if I would have gotten that had I done it the other way. 16 plus 9 is 25, and 25 plus 11 is 36. So either way, I still would have gotten to get exactly 36, but by going ahead and changing the grouping, I ended up with something that was easier to do in my head. So what the associative property does is it allows us to change the grouping when we're adding numbers. So the associative property for addition says that when I have a set of numbers being added, how I group or which numbers I choose to add first is basically what we're saying, because remember, grouping symbols say do this first is up to me. I can go ahead and I can choose to add a, the first two numbers first, or I can choose to use the second set of two numbers. Okay, so the last property for addition that we're talking about is what we call the additive identity property. So the additive identity property, let's look at our example first. Okay, so let's say we were adding 35 to 0. Well, 35 plus 0, as we all know, is 35. So what it means is that when I added 0 to the number 35, I ended up with what I started with. In other words, I didn't change the identity of the number I started with. So what the additive identity property says is that when I take a number and I add zero to it, I end up with exactly what I started with. So the number zero is considered to be the additive identity. I can add zero to any number that we can think of, and I still end up with the same number I started with, no matter how big or how small. And all of those properties also apply to multiplication, but they do not apply to subtraction and division. So, for the commutative property, for example, 5 times 7 we know is 35, and 7 times 5 is also 35. 
And so the community property for multiplication says that if we go ahead and we have a times b, it's the same as b times a. So any two numbers, no matter what they are, if I multiply them, multiplying them in this opposite order, or reverse order, I should say, is the same. So the associated property tells us that we can group numbers that are being multiplied. Why? Well, I know 7 times 4 is 28, but 28 times 5, kind of a pain in the butt to do. But I could do it. I could go ahead and do 28 times 5. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 and 4 is 14. And I get um, 140. So this, because I know 4 times 5 is 20, 20 times 7 is just 2 times 7 and a 0 at the end. It's 140, and it's easier to do it in my head. I could do it that way. So I use the associate property to help me come up with the problem a little bit easier with me arithmetic. So the associated property for multiplication says that when you're multiplying a set of numbers and only multiplying, so multiplication is the only operation, I can group the numbers that I'm multiplying so that I multiply any groups two numbers first. So the multiplicative identity isn't zero because if I multiplied 35 times zero, I would have gotten zero. But if I multiply 35 times one, I end up with 35. So the multiplicative identity says that if I take any real number, multiply it by one, I end up with exactly the number I started with. So down here, I have a couple of problems. And it's just some statements. So these are some numerical expressions because there's no variables. And it says the same thing on the left for both of them. And I want to know what properties were used. So reading from left to right, it says 5 times the product of 3 times 2. But on the right side of this first one, it says 5 times the product of 2 times 3. So what changed? So I do see grouping symbols, which kind of makes me think I use the associative property. But who's in the group? 2 times 3, and over here, I see 3 and 2. So did the group change? No. So it wasn't the associative property that was used. Did the order change? Well, commutative property says that the order can change. So if the order changed, that means it's the commutative property. So in this first statement, I apply the commutative property. Okay, so let's look at the second one. So same statement, I have three, five, Two. So did the order change? Yes. So definitely the commutative property. What about the group? Well, the group was 3 and 2, but now it's 5 and 2. So did the group change? Yes. So it's also the associative property. So when we're looking at which properties were used, to rewrite a numerical expression or later on an algebraic expression, you can use more than one property at a time. So there's two examples, one where only the commutative property was used and one where the commutative and associative property were used. And that concludes this lesson.